in the products. Here it is. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. Okay, get in your zone. I'm in my zone. <laughs> okay, yeah, we have some updates. We have some updates. Yes, we have. A, we actually, this week was a big update week. Um, as we're getting ready for the holiday, we're actually, uh, the holidays, um, we're uh, revising and update a lot, uh, updating a lot of our packs. It's a good time to do it since a lot of people will be buying them. So this is, actually, can you go back one? Yeah. This is the update to the Raspberry Pi Model B pack. Now, we carry the Model B Plus. But there's still some people who want the B, or maybe the B plus is out of stock, or for some reason, whatever, we're still carrying the B, and we're still carrying the, the B starter pack. There might be some books that you want to follow along using a B. Uh, we updated the the uh, Pi B starter pack, now that we have it back in stock, and here's a couple things we updated. First up, um, you still get an SD card, but the SD card is now pre-burned with Raspbian, so it's, it's boot and forget it. Uh, Raspbian is super stable, it's the official Oh, OS, so you're ready to go. We also include um, uh, premium wires, so like right here. Instead of the, like the flexible wires, we now have really high quality wires and they're longer, so they work really well with the long breadboard. Um, you get fewer of them, but they're much better quality and um, they work a lot better with the, the parts in the breadboard we have. So we've upgraded uh, to premium wires. And then below that, um, down there, we have a little USB stick that's a Wi Fi adapter. We used to include an Ethernet cable because Wi-Fi wasn't as stable. Now, with the, uh, the in the last year, the Raspbian uh, distribution has had very strict, stable Wi-Fi, and the, this chipset, the RTL chipset, um, the RealTek chipset, has been super, super solid. And so, yeah, we basically moved to just say like, hey, just use Wi-Fi instead of Ethernet. And also, a lot of people have Ethernet cords, so we have them in the store if you want them. But we strongly suggest um, just getting Wi-Fi. And um, we also have larger buttons, so they're easier to press. And we no longer include the USB burner because instead we have the SD card pre-burned. So I think that's improved a bunch of the stuff, especially the Wi-Fi upgrade, which is a, a big upgrade instead, because a lot of people end up just buying a USB Wi-Fi adapter at, at the same time. Okay, next up. Okay, so that, here's just a photo showing all the images. You know, it's like the new Wi-Fi, the bigger buttons, same old parts, okay, skip ahead. Um, and this just shows it all laid out nicely. Uh, this is, um, I think this is just a photo of the, the pack. We also have a pack that does not include a Pi. So we have the starter pack with Pi and without. This just has basically the same parts, but does not include a Raspberry Pi. Some people already have one. Uh, and we thought since we have, we're, you know, we're doing this from the start, we make it so you have, you know, if you have a Pi, just get the pack without one. Right. Okay. But it's only for the Model B. It won't fit the Model B Plus. So don't get this if you have a Model B Plus because it won't fit in the case and the cobbler won't fit and you'll yeah. just, be sad. It'll be tragedy. Okay, and then next step, so skip ahead two. We also upgraded the Raspberry Pi budget pack. And the budget pack is just meant to be like, this is the minimum to get your Raspberry Pi Model B going. It has a power supply and the USB cable, and it has a smaller breadboard and smaller wires. Um, we upgraded this by giving you uh, the premium wires, and also we have uh, moved to, um, uh, sorry, I'm trying to remember, I think, what else did we oh no, sorry, we only upgraded the wires. I thought we included USB Wi-Fi, but this one never came up with Ethernet or Wi-Fi. So yeah, we just upgraded the wires um, and we reduced the price a bit because of that. Okay. So it's even less expensive. So yeah, you need a Model B instead of B plus, these are the great packs for you. Again, not suggested if you're starting out, get the B plus starter pack, but if you happen to need a Model B for some compatibility thing, these are still in the store. Except another update. Yes. This is an update. This is not a new item. We've had the Zuma for a while. It's from Pololu. It's an awesome little bot. You plug a Arduino into it. I think in the next photo it even shows you. Wow, look at that. You plug an Arduino into it, yeah. and you are ready to make your own little Zuma bot. This update has added, um, you can barely see it, but uh, it now adds a gyro. So it used to have an accelerometer and magnetometer. Um, so you can do compass and you know, acceleration and location, but that also adds a gyro, so you can do full nine degrees of uh, freedom IMU. It's good for your robotics. Um, the price is the same, but they've upgraded it, and uh, the sensors are, all, sensors are a little bit higher quality. So if you want to zoom out, this is a, a very easy way to get started with uh, Sumo Robotics. Okay. And Pololu, super cool company. You should check out... Um, Pololu.com. They've been doing lots of cool projects and some yep. videos. Yep, they've so been doing lots of tutorials and yeah, projects. Yeah, yeah, so check out Pololu.com. Okay, next up, pliers. These are crimpers, not pliers. Pliers, crimpers. Man, 
You, you, I know. You can't just go ahead and say pliers. Yeah, no, they're pliers. not pliers. There's nothing to do with plying. These are, they're not for pliers These are crimpers. At all. These are for crimpers. I saw the thumbnail. I'm like, are these pliers? Are these they crimpers? look like pliers. Yeah, these are really good. These are from Engineer. They're from Engineer, a Japanese company. And we have a, a couple other uh, versions of this plier. We have the PA09 and the PA21, and this is the PA20. Um, it's got really, really high quality crimping action. If you're making um, wire harnesses, if you know how much that sucks, it's the most sucky part of doing engineering. Um, this tool will help you a lot. It can handle a wide range of uh, crimp sizes and wire sizes. Check the engineer website. They have a table for this is the connector you're using, this is the crimper tool we suggest, which covers like the inner crimper and outer crimp workers. You'll need two different sizes for that. Um, so yeah, check out their site for exactly which one you want for which, but they're very, very high quality tools. And it, it, even though these look a lot like the really cheap crimpers that you get that are like 10 bucks, these are like much, much higher quality and very precision ground. So you'll get very, very high quality crimps. Uh, your wires won't break or crack, which is a, a common problem making wire harnesses using cheap crimpers. Yeah. Okay. Don't cheap out on your crimpers. Okay, next up. New from Monk Makes. This is the Raspberry Pi Leaf for the B+. I'll show this on the overhead because it's a little confusing what it is. Oh, that's me. <laughs> we are underneath the overhead. No, we're not. Okay. We're right here. Um, so this is a Raspberry Pi Model B Plus, and you can see it's got the 40 pins. So many pins, it's actually kind of hard to like know. Like You're like, oh, the ground pin. You're like, what the hell is that? So what this leaf does is um, it's, a, it's a thick kind of piece of cardstock with all the names of all the pins labeled very nicely so that when you're like, oh, I have to connect to a ground wire, you will be able to easily connect to the wire you want or pin GPIO5. Works great with, you know, libraries, wiring. It's, it's basically if you don't want to get a, um, a cobbler, you want to keep something small, and you just use wires with uh, socket ends, and we have a bunch of those in the store. So it doesn't come with the wires uh, shown here, but we have them in the shop. And... Uh, they make wiring very easy. So this is very very good if you want to very quickly wire up to your model B plus. And you get two of them. Okay. So that was just a close up of it there. All right, next up. Pliers. I'm just gonna get Man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go with it. That would be sweet if you just said that everything was pliers. And here's another you're like the, photo of the you're pliers. You're like the hodor of, of electronics. Yeah. Pliers. Okay. This is a uh, HDMI cable. And it's just a short HDMI cable. And the reason we have this is we have like these um, HDMI monitors. These are like really high quality um, 720p monitors. And you may want to say like put your Raspberry Pi or your Beagle Bone on the back. Well, in case Raspberry Pi has an HDMI connector on it. Um, but this is a short cable, and so you don't have a big tangle. And they're also flat, so they can um, crimp close. So like if you want to make this really compact, um, you could just use a clip. Like a maybe like a paper clip, a, th a thick paper clip or a binder clip, and just or or just um, not binder ties, the uh, zip ties yeah. to um, keep this uh, folded over, and then you can have a very compact HDMI connection to your Raspberry Pi or something. So we thought these would be handy for projects that used our monitors and wanted to avoid this like long cable mess. These okay. are the shortest cables we could get. We could not find cables any shorter. We could find adapters that were shorter, but not a flexible cable. Okay. You can like, you know, it's thin and flexible. It's a noodle type, so you can like really mess around with it and uh, tuck it into small locations. So okay. if anyone can find a shorter cable, like six inches, let me know. I couldn't, couldn't find one. A short right. yeah. Here's a plier breakout board. <laughs> All right, I'll stop with the plier jigs. It's not because it's just, it's mostly it's not, fine. it's mostly because it's not funny. Uh, um, it's funny. Yeah. I think it's funny. Yeah. Wait, all right. Go back, go back. Okay. So okay. this is a, um, this is a really quickie breakout. It's an LM4040 um, that K-Town designed and he designed this actually because he's like, I personally need uh, voltage references because he was measuring some analog digital converter stuff and he was, it was just a pain because you want to have a really, really good precision reference for your analog digital yeah. converter. Um, and you know you can just say like, oh, well, I'll use USB five volts, but the, US, the voltage that comes out of your wall adapter from the USB, it's not going to be exactly five volts. It's going to be like 5.1, 4.9. It's going to be off by like five percent. Like voltage regulators have two to five percent accuracy. Yeah. They're not that accurate. I, I tell you what I like about you engineers is when you make something for you, and then you're you get you get all giddy and you're like, oh, we can. Just, this is a good thing for the store too. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. So, um, so this is a, a K-Town joint. 
Yeah. Uh, and we, we stuck uh, two types of precision uh, voltage references on there. There is, go forward one. Yeah. 2.048 volts and 4.096 volts, which actually, it sounds like a weird number, but it means that if you have a 10 or 12 bit ADC, you get one bit per millivolt, which is kind of nice, it divides nicely. Um, and uh, you can, you don't have to use both, you use either V in, have it be from three volts to like 12 volts, five volts if you wanna have the four volt reference. And these are not regulators. They will not give you regulated output. Um, they're not for powering something. They are for measuring. So if you want to calibrate something, these are very, very high precision references. They're advertised as 0.1, but I want to say like, assume 0.2. Like, you know, they're, 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 we try to get really good ones, but we notice that depending on your voltage and the temperature and whatever, they may vary a teeny, teeny bit. They're very, very good. Um, but like, don't freak out if they're 0.2% instead of 0.1%, depending on what you're powering it with. Remember, if okay. you want to really... And then, oh, you, have one you have an action shot, right? This is an action shot. This is um, K-Town's um, Agilent like, benchtop multimeter that we bought him. I don't even know how many hundreds of dollars this cost, but you can tell it's very precise. Measuring the uh, two volt output, it's 2.048 volts yeah. DC. And if you go to the overhead, I can actually demo this. Yeah, this is a cool tool. With Kevin, Kevin's worth, and I want to send him more equipment because I know he'll do amazing things with no, it. No, this was like, he's, I'm actually like, wow, we got this expensive multimeter. It was, like, let's use it. Yeah, it was cool. Um, I think Kate Town's in the chat tonight. Say hi to Kevin. All right, say hi to Kate Town. All right, so you want to do So, this yeah, I'll show it on the overhead real fast. So, this is, I'm just using like my low cost pocket meter that I really like. And then I just have it powered off of um, the Verter, which I'll show next. So, it's providing five volts. And then I can measure from um, ground to two volts. Hold on. Oh, get in there. So, yeah, 2.47, very, very close to 2.48. It's a good multimeter. And then I measure the five, uh, four volt and a little bit. Yeah, it's basically 4.10, just very, very close to 4.096. It's actually 0 0.004 mil. Uh, four millivolts off, which is very good for a pocket multimeter. Um, so you can use this to measure how accurate your multimeter or precise your multimeter is, and also, um, you know, use for your analog digital converters, or if you want to just like check if something's working. Uh, this little guy is very handy. Okay. Okay. Moving on. Moving on. Last but not least. You named this. Yeah, this is the Verter. Yeah, not pliers. Verter. Yeah. And we got some cool silkscreen on the back. Check out this cool silkscreen. Yeah. Yeah, fancy. So this is Verter. design. Yeah, so this is really neat because you just you just throw anything at this thing, and it's like, yeah, 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 five volts. Yeah, this is a, a buck boost. <laughs> yeah. Which, uh, this is the first buck boost we have in the store. We have... Um, it's a weird... It's it's kind of weird. It's a, it, When people hear about this, they're like, what do you mean, wait, what? What is it? What is it? Yeah, yeah what is that? It, uh, when you're converting voltages for power, you can use either a linear regulator, which burns off, you know, whatever the difference is between the high and low voltage is heat. But then you, you know, maybe you have to boost a voltage. You have to get it from three volts up to five volts. You can't use a linear regulator. You have to use a boost converter. So we have like, the power boost and the power boost shield. Um, but if you're, if you have like, so like that goes from like low voltages to high, and then you have a buck converter which goes from high voltages to low. But then there's this weird problem where, like, this is actually the problem you have with four AA batteries. This is a four AA battery problem, which is four AA's, depending on whether you use rechargeables or alkalines, whether they're really fresh or not, can vary from four volts to seven volts. Yeah. But four, four AA batteries is like a really nice chunk of battery. So it, it clearly is very close to five volts, but it's not exactly. So this is a buck boost converter. And what that does is it, it combines both a buck converter and a boost converter in one chip and it dynamically switches between the two as necessary so if the voltage is like five volts or above it down converts and if it's three volts or up it up converts so it will automatically you know you can have three volts or 12 volts in and it will just automatically give you five volts out no matter what which is very handy when you don't know what your battery is going to be or your battery starts at seven volts and droops down to four which is again the four AA battery problem um, or you know you're 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 working with some system where like somebody will plug in a battery or power adapter and you don't know what they're going to plug in. So this is a, a handy device. Um, 
It uses the uh, TPS 63060, which is a very fine chip. It can take three to 12 volts in. And in this case, we set up to be five volts out. And then can we go to the next one? Yeah, which one? The next the, one? The next one. <laughs> the, the next one. Next one. Uh, Wire. Wire. And okay. this is the demo. This is a four AA battery test. It um, can take uh, four batteries, AA batteries in. Of course, you can use anything from, from about um, two AA batteries to up to like eight for a 12 volt. And it will give you a nice fresh five volts out. We have a USB plug that you can solder in. And it has the resistors on it for um, iOS devices so that when you plug it in, it will automatically start charging at 500 mill, uh, milliamps. Yeah. Very handy. We'll say one thing about this chip, though. It does work, and it will do boosting and bucking just fine. However, it's much better at buck converting than boost converting. So it's not a good idea to use this if you know that you're never going to have anything that goes above, like, 5 volts. If you're, like, if you're using, like, three AA batteries or a LiPo battery or a lithium-ion battery, and you're like, well, I know that my battery is never going to... Um, go above like five volts. You should use a boost converter like the Power Boost because this one droops a little bit. It's not. It doesn't have a, a really nice tight five volt output. Actually, it's five point two volts. So it better. Up. It's better as a buck versus a boost. It is because okay. a buck conversion is easier on the chip. There's less. There's less heat involved because it, it's it's chopping it up instead of, of trying to like fill this inductor. So when you when you're using it as a buck converter, you can get an amp out. And if you're doing it as a bus. A, boost converter, it's 500 milliamps. So basically, if you want high current especially, use it in, at the higher than 5 volt range. But it can handle it if you droop down a little bit. Also, some buck converters can't handle less than like 1 volt difference. Like you can't go below 6 volts, and in this case you can. So it's good if you're like, especially this 4AA problem where you're like, eh, it's, it's going to be mostly above um, 5 volts, but it might droop below, you're safe. It'll, it will automatically convert to a booster. So I think it's a handy chip. Um, it might also be useful for, um, like, you know, I, I, we might have a version out that, that can do 3.3 .3 volts out, and that would be handy for LiPos because LiPos, again, they, they range from 3 volts when they're dead to 4 volts. So that's when you do want to have something that can convert between the two ranges of battery outputs to 3 volts. So that might be a future product. So that's what it's good for. But if you, if you know you're going to be low or you know you're going to be high, we have buck converters and boost converters that are much better at it. They're, if they're specifically for that purpose. Okay. All right, that's it. That's it. Good work. New products. You did it.